Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tanika and in today's video, I am going to be recreating my wedding makeup look. Now I tossed back and forth with the idea of doing my own makeup, but at the end of the day, I thought I'm going to be too picky. So I'm just gonna do it myself and I am so glad that I did. Before the day, I did do a few trials on myself and I ended up writing up everything I was going to use and I took this with me so that I kind of had a plan and I wouldn't forget any steps or if I was stressed, I just knew what was going on. So I'm going to work off this sheet again today and show you what makeup I used, what brushes I used and how I did my makeup for my wedding day. When I woke up in the morning, I did my normal skincare routine and just made sure that my base was really hydrated. Then I went in with a few different primers. I started off with the MAC strobe cream and this is in the shade Gold Light. I didn't want to be extremely dewy, but I wanted to have a little bit of a glow and MAC strobe cream is the perfect product for that. I used a small amount of this and went in with this Morphe E45 brush to blend it out. Next, I went in with my trusty L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. If you find you have quite a lot of redness to your skin and you are super fair, this is a great primer as it evens out your skin tone completely. Therefore, you don't need to apply extra coverage to combat the redness because this product does the trick. Going in with the same brush to apply that, And then I went in with one last primer and this is the Benefit Pore Professional. This fills in any enlarged pores really well and just leaves a beautiful smooth finish to the skin. So just using my finger, I applied this where I have large pores. So on my nose and on this area, oh that's gone. I also applied a little bit to my forehead and my chin. Next, I did a little bit of color correcting. I did have a bit of a pimple on my cheek, I'm pretty sure, so I wanted to make sure that was covered up. So I went in with the Australis Color Click Green Concealer. Now this you only need a small amount of, and I like to use this Morphe E22 brush. It's actually an eyeshadow brush, but I find it works really well for covering blemishes. So to show you, I'll cover up this pimple here and these ones here. If the blemish is really bad, you can then go over the top with a skin colored concealer. Otherwise, your foundation's fine. So these ones aren't too bad and I don't think the one on my wedding day was that bad either. So just foundation is going to be fine. The next step was to add a little soap into my brows. I love the effect of soap brows. I didn't want to go too much on my wedding day, but the soap definitely does keep them in place a lot better. So I just went in with a small amount. I've just got this bar of Pears Transparent Soap and I just spritz it with a little bit of a setting spray. And then I just brushed my brow hairs up, trying not to get too much soap onto my skin because I find sometimes when I go in with too much, the foundation sits funny on the soap. And then using the other end of my spoolie just to flatten those brow hairs down. Next, I went in with foundation. Now, I prefer to do foundation before eyes. I know a lot of people like to do it the other way. I've tried the other way, but I just don't like it. So foundation first. And I did go in with the Maybelline Superstay 24 Hour Foundation. Very, very sadly, this has been discontinued now, but it is amazing. And I'm so sad that it's gone. I did get a few backups before it was gone forever. So I'm sorry that I'm even recommending this, but it's what I used. <laughs> the reason that I chose this foundation is because it has really beautiful coverage. It leaves a satin matte finish and the longevity is outstanding. This can stand up to my sweat mustache, so it can stand up to anything. <laughs> to apply foundation, I like to spread it over my face first. So I do that using a concealer brush. This one here 
is the Sigma, I'm gonna say F75. Once I've spread it onto my face, I like to blend it out with a sponge. I like to use the Beauty Blender. Once I applied that first layer, I did go in and touch up a few more areas. In total, I used two pumps of foundation. And here is just a quick close up of what my skin looks like. I feel like it looks very smooth and flawless. See how I've still got a bit of a glow as well? Next for concealer, I went in with my absolute favorite, the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer in the shade 322 Ivory. What I love about the concealer is that it has a fantastic full coverage, it doesn't feel heavy or cakey under the eyes, and it leaves a beautiful, smooth and flawless finish. I started with just a little bit in the inner corner and then blended it out to see how the coverage was looking. I didn't want to go too heavy under the eyes. I feel like I went a little bit overboard with the powder on the day, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Again, I'm using my beauty blender and just lightly tapping to blend that in. When blending the concealer, I like to stop at the end of my eye here. I don't like to bring it all the way up because when I smile and laugh, I do get lines and creases. And I find that makeup settles quite easily into those lines. So to avoid that, I just put less makeup there. Next, I went ahead and set my face using the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Pressed Powder in the shade 120 Fair. I chose to go with this powder because the shade is fantastic. It does add a little bit more coverage, nothing too heavy, but the finish is just so smooth. Everything looks beautiful. To apply my powder, I used my sponge because I wanted to really press the powder into the skin to make sure I was setting everything in place. I did go in with a brush for under my eyes as well. This is one by Designer Brands Cosmetics. It's the highlighter brush. I like this for under my eyes though because it is so small and tapered. Now I do get quite a bit of creasing under my eyes because I just have a ton of fine lines. So I did go in with a touch more powder just to try and get into those lines. And so this is where I think on the day I just went a little bit too heavy trying to get those lines. But when I put my eyeshadow on, I just smoked it out a bit more on the lower lash line to kind of hide it anyway. <laughs> Then I went in with a powder brush. This one is the Morphe E3. And without any more powder, I just lightly dusted over the skin just to make sure that there weren't any missing patches. So again, let me turn down the brightness and you can take a look at my skin. I think that it just looks so smooth. You can see these fine lines under here. That's not going anywhere, but they look pretty good. Next, I started working on the cheek product. So for bronzer, I went in with my Becca Sunlit Bronzer in Bali Sands. Now, Becca has gone out of business. So I'm not sure if they still have products floating around, but if you can get your hands on this bronzer, do it. A few months ago, I bought a backup and I'm so glad that I have a nice full one. It's gonna last me a while. It's just such a beautiful bronzer, a great shade for super fair skin, and it has a little bit of a sheen. So I didn't wanna go with anything too matte because I wanted to have that beautiful bridal glow. <laughs> and then to apply the bronzer, I went in with my Sigma F40 Large Angled Contour Brush. I made sure I just went in with little bits at a time. I didn't wanna go too hard and heavy. I just slowly built the product up. And I also made sure to keep the product nice and high on the cheek and not bring it down too low.
I also took a little bit up along my hairline to add that warmth back into my face. Now I'm not crazy big on contouring, but I did go in with just a touch and I used this MAC blush in the shade Cosmic Force. It's a really beautiful, cool toned shade that has a slightly gray undertone. So it works really well for creating definition on fair skin. I just went in with the same brush and just a very tiny amount and sat it right in the hollows of my cheeks here. For blush, I went in with a cream product and I used the Fenty Cheeks Out Blush in Strawberry Drip. Now this blush in the pan looks very, <laughs> oh whoa, but it doesn't apply like this. It just leaves a beautiful flush of color. It's quite sheer and using this Sigma brush here helps it to build up really well and it doesn't disturb any of the makeup underneath. So this brush is the Sigma F53 Air Contour Blush Brush. And again with the placement, I tried to keep the blush up nice and high. I did bring it a little bit down onto the apples of my cheeks, but I didn't go overboard. <laughs> well, I tried not to. <laughs> Small tapping motions to apply this. And again, just building that product up. I was really happy with the products that I chose. There's nothing that I would have swapped out. I think that everything lasted really well. All right, so now that I have most of my base on, I went in with my Rimmel Insta Fix and Go setting spray to lock all of this hard work in place and also just set all those powders. Next, I did my brows and I did trial quite a few different products and I didn't want to go too heavy or like Instagram-y glam on the brows. I did want them to look quite natural. So I decided to use my Urban Decay Brow Blade and this is in the shade Brown Sugar. Now one side is a pencil and the other side is a brow pen. Usually for brow products, I use stuff from the drugstore. I don't think you need to go out and spend the money on a high-end brow product. But the reason that I chose this one is because the brow pen side is a nice light color. Whereas the other brow pens that I have from the drugstores, I've got one from Essence, one from Emco Beauty, one from somewhere else, they're all quite deep. And I did use those when I did my trial and my brows were just too much. So that's the reason that I went with this. So starting with the brow pencil, I like to draw underneath the brow, fix up the arch a bit, and then go in with the brow pen to draw in those hair-like strokes. As you can see, that is a really light color. It works perfectly for me. I've extended the tail a little bit and also filled in the front of the brow. Once my brows were done, I went in again with my L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer and carved out my brows and primed my eyelids ready for shadow. For this, I have two brushes that I always use. First is the Morphe M421, which is just a small concealer brush. And then I go in with the Sigma P88 Precision Flat Angled Brush to blend out the concealer. I really tried not to get too fixated on different aspects of my makeup, making sure they were extremely perfect. Like obviously I wanted it to look good, but for example, I didn't spend 30 minutes trying to even out my brows. I got it the best I could and I just left it because otherwise I could sit there for 30 plus minutes going, I want to fix that one, I'll fix that one, do that one, do that one. It's just, don't, I didn't want it to stress me out that much because I enjoy doing my makeup, which is why I chose to do it. And I wanted to feel relaxed and happy and not be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> So once I've carved it out, that's when I go in with the Sigma brush and just tap to blend out the rest of the concealer. Okay. 
I like to set my eyelids, so again in with the CoverGirl powder. For my eyeshadow, I went in with the Natasha Denona Glam Palette and one shadow from the ColourPop that's Taupe Palette. Now both of these palettes have cool tones, which is what I preferred for my wedding day. So starting out with this shade here called Blend, I used my Sieg, no I didn't, I used my Zoeva 227 brush. This one, as you can see, has quite a fluffy top but it is still tapered. So I'm going to be able to put that color exactly where I want it without over blending. So I started by tapping it into the outer V and then blending it in my crease. Right. Now when I rest my eyes, you can see my crease here. I tried to bring the shadow up just above my crease. Not too high though, because I don't want it to touch my brow. So again, just going in with layers of this shadow and slowly building that up and blending it out. I then swapped over to the Sigma E42 brush and put that same shadow on the lower lash line. To make sure the edges were blended, I went in with the Sigma E33 brush. This is a very tiny blending brush. It's very, very fluffy. And this is when I went in with my ColourPop palette. And I used this shade here called Boa, which is a very light shade. And just with a little bit of that, I went over the edges of that first shadow. I also did the same thing on the lower lash line. Next, I used the same Zoeva brush that I used to apply the first shade, and I took this deeper brown smoke from the Natasha Denona Glam palette, and I placed a little bit of that in the outer corner, and again, through the crease, but not blending it up as high. Then with my Sigma E15 brush, I took that same shade and popped a little bit on the lower lash line. And then for my shimmer shade, I took this center lid shade from the Natasha Denona Glam palette and I used two different brushes. I have the Sigma E54 and the Sigma E56. As you can see, this one here is a little fatter and fluffier, whereas this one's quite thin and precise. So using the thin and precise brush to pop that color down. And then using the other brush with a touch more of the color to blend it into the crease. Then I went back in with the original Zoeva brush with a little bit more of the two brown shades and just tapped that over where the shimmer meets the matte, just to make sure it's nice and blended. To finish off my eyes, I went in with a liquid liner by Maybelline. This is the Hyper Easy Brush Tip Liner, and I just did a very thin line across my lash line. Next, I went in with a mascara by Maybelline as well. The Falsies Lash Lift has been an absolute favorite of mine for a while now, so I went and picked up the waterproof version because I knew that there'd be a few tears. And then I went in with the Ilua Lashes in the style 117. All right, I've just gone ahead and finished the other eye. While I wait for the lash glue to dry, I'm going to go in with a eyeliner pencil. This is the L'Oreal Le Liner Signature Eyeliner. And I have a brown shade here, and I used this to tight line. For me, I find this just makes my lashes look like complete. And then once the lashes are dry, I like to go in with the liquid liner again and just run over the lash line just to make sure everything's nice and dark, and then I'll go in and tie line as well. I did have a bit of a boo-boo before with the eyeliner, and it's a little bit thick in one area. So I'm just going to take a bit more of that gold shadow. Well, actually, first I'm gonna take some concealer. Where's the brush I want? I'm going to take the brush I used to put the concealer on my eyelid with no extra product, 
and just try and like erase that black line. And then I'll use the gold shadow to go over it. Okay, for lips, I went in with a few products, starting out with the Maybelline Color Sensational Lip Liner in Nude Whisper. Then I went in with the Huda Beauty Liquid Lipstick in the shade Wifey, which I'm only just realizing. What? It's called Wifey and I wore it only becoming a wife? <laughs> and then I went over that with a little bit of MAC Blankety just in the center of my lips. I originally wanted to use MAC Blankety as my lipstick, but then I thought I'm gonna need something that's going to stay put and last a long time. So that's why I end up going with the Huda Beauty. I feel like when you hear liquid lipstick, it's like, oh my God, so drying, so uncomfortable. But these Huda Beauty ones I really enjoy because they're very thin and they're very opaque. So you do not need to apply a lot of product. They dry down pretty quickly and they're really comfortable on the lips. And then before I went in with highlighter and one last huge dose of setting spray, I just did a quick check, made sure everything was blended. I was happy with my blush and my bronzer. My lipstick was neat, my eyes were good. For highlighter, I used the MAC Extra Dimension Skin Finish in Double Gleam. This is the most beautiful highlighter. It just leaves such a kind of like wet, glass skin look and it's not too metallic so I thought it was going to be perfect for the wedding day and I didn't go in with too much either because I just wanted a nice glow so I applied it with my Morphe E or oh, it could be 81 I don't know why these just rub off so easily but it's a big fluffy highlighting brush and just a little bit on my cheeks here And then as I said, I finished with some setting spray. So again, the Rimmel Insta Fix and Go. Just a little bit. <laughs> and then to have that nice, beautiful sheen to my skin, I went in with the L'Oreal Shake and Glow. With this, I just put a little bit on the sides of my face. Now, I didn't do my hair. I did have someone to do that. And I have curled it today to try and get a similar look, but she did do more like glamour waves, which I have no idea how to do. So look, this is close enough. These are the earrings that I wore on my wedding day. I didn't go and buy anything too fancy. These are just from Colette, but the style really suited my dress. All right, well, this is it. The finished look for my Bridal Glam makeup. I really enjoyed doing my own makeup on the day and I'm glad that I did. I left myself plenty of time, like more than I knew that I needed, but just in case, I left myself a big chunk of time so that I was able to just sit down, relax and enjoy the process. So if you're thinking of doing your own makeup for your wedding day, I would definitely say go for it. Just do a few practice runs at home and give yourself plenty of time. All right, well, that is all from me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial and enjoyed my week of wedding uploads. I had so much fun editing the vlogs and going over the footage and it just feels really special to be able to share that with you. So I hope that you enjoyed watching. If you haven't seen the vlogs or my q and I will have them linked down below and I will list all the makeup that I used in this tutorial as well. If you're new here, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. You can also come and follow me over on Instagram. Otherwise, I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.